Welcome to this chair yoga practice where we're going to explore unwinding the tension of the physical body by stretching the neck and shoulders, common areas of holding. We will also be stretching the side waist, the intercostals, the diaphragm. Your breath is key to why you gather tension or resolve tension. We will also then look at the hip flexors, another key area of important attention for us because if our lives have more flexion, in other words, sitting, than they do extension, the hip flexors and the psoas as well tend to get shortened. And that can cause lower back pain or hip dysfunction. So we'll take a look at that too. Okay, let's head to class. Welcome for practice in chair yoga. We have a full spectrum experience of yoga. We just adapt it to a chair so that we can feel stable and strong and actually go deeper in some ways. Um, so let's take a comfortable seat to get started. You can rest your hands in your lap. You're welcome to close your eyes. Perhaps you can feel the joy of arriving for yoga practice and set aside that which would impede on your yoga practice. So you're just laying down those burdens, whatever they might be. If you allow your breath to start coming in and flowing out, what we're really doing is granting permission for the breath that wants to breathe us to do that. So the beginning of a yoga practice is actually an act of surrender. We surrender what's not relevant to the present. We surrender the tension of the body to receive the breath. And practicing that subtle act of surrender, it may have to be repeated, even moment to moment. Release the tension of the body, which is tension from the present moment and many past moments, many past body memories. Tension is also the anticipation of the future. So when we relax body tension, we're also letting ourselves be here fully in the present. I'll invite you now to take a little deeper breath cycle. And as you do that, picture the inhale is really delivering you to the present moment. And the exhale is surrendering preoccupation with past or future, including your body's preoccupation with past or future, which again shows up as body tension. We could say inhale with the intention to be present Exhale, release the tension that prevents you from being present. And then please raise your hands to your heart. Acknowledge yourself for being here for practice. Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Punaktu Savedyang Karaval Tejas Vinavari Tamastu Ma Oh, Sahana, 
head to your heart. Release your hands. Please sit forward on the front edge of your chair. And as you do that, reach your hands back to the sides of the chair. So you'll hold, in my case, this metal bar here. You're going to hold and roll the shoulders back. If necessary, bend the elbows so that you have the shoulder moving back from the shoulder capsule here. Bring your chin down towards your throat, lift the heart up. And we'll keep this spinal position with the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine. On the inhale, we are going to raise the chest and the heart and open your throat. So the movement is in the thoracic spine and then the cervical spine. And then exhale, moving only the cervical spine, bring your chin down towards your throat, keep your heart lifted. Inhale, raise up. And exhale, follow the lengthening flow of the exhale and the inhale, which means you can slow down your breath and then match the movement of your body to the length of the breath. We'll do one more exhale coming down. Keep the shoulders squeezed back, breathe in. And then exhale, release your arms. Let your hands rest in your lap. Practice no particular kind of breathing right now, but simply to witness your body releasing tension. Okay, reach only the right hand back. Pull the right shoulder back a bit. Set your shoulder blade to go down your upper back. Lift your heart here, and then start turning your head as far as you comfortably can to your left, and open your left arm to support that spinal rotation to your left. Let's take a deep breath in, as if you were setting a sail on an ocean breeze. Inhale to lift your heart. And then exhale, bring that back to center and hold with your left hand as you hold the bar or the side of the chair. Set the shoulder back, bring your shoulder blade down your upper back and let's inhale to open to the right. Again, imagine that you're lifting a sail on the ship to catch the ocean breeze. One more deep breath in. And then exhale to release. Interlace your fingers, press the heels of the hands straight forward. Let's inhale to go up. So big stretch for the shoulder girdle, but it's gonna be supported by your thoracic spine. So go ahead and look down with your chin. 
and with your gaze, of course. And as you raise the arms up, press up from your heart, lift your collarbones up towards your chin, stretch the front side of the arms, raise up through your thumbs. Now again, we're gonna use the breath to move the cervical spine. So as you inhale, lift your thoracic spine, then open your throat, lift your chin and your gaze. And exhale, bring only your chin down towards the base of the throat, the top of the sternum. Again, inhale to go up, keep the strength of your arms to the best of your ability. Exhale, pull down, keeping the arms raised up. And then one more time, inhale to look up. And exhale, press out to the sides of the room. As you get to shoulder height, pause right there. Reach out through the heels of the hands. Spread the fingers wide. You might notice there's tension in your forearms. So breathe in. And then exhale, curl the fingers under. There might be tension at the top of the forearm. Inhale, spread the fingers, raise them up. Exhale, press forward, bring the fingers down and under. We do that one more time. Inhale, spread your fingers, reach them up. And exhale, fingers down and under. And then let the arms dangle. So the hands won't touch the lap this time, let them dangle. And notice the circulation. You can close the eyes and come down into your fingers and your thumb. And the circulation will then level out and your hands will be normal temperature again. However, if you struggle with cold hands, your hands might be warming up by the activities that we're doing. And that's partly musculoskeletal, but it's also the nervous system making a change and spreading circulation back out, even to the periphery of the body, the distal parts of your body. So now hold the chair with your right hand, hold the chair seat or hold the chair leg. You'll hold the leg if you have longer arms than I do. There you go. And then tip your left ear down towards your left shoulder. Let's bring the chin a little bit in towards the right collarbone. Now on the inhale, pull your right shoulder up like you're pulling on the seat of the chair. It's not really going to go very far. On the exhale, let the right shoulder drop down. So you're releasing that resistance. So inhale, pull up using the muscles that you're stretching. Exhale, release those muscles. Let's do it again. Inhale, pull up. Exhale, drop down. It's going to be like an invisible action because it's isometric. You inhale to pull up. Nobody can see the shoulder actually moving. But you'll feel the muscles at the top of the shoulder blade. And exhale and drop that down. And do that one more time. Inhale, pull up. And exhale, drop. And then float your head up to center and let's take notice of how the two sides of the neck feel different. All right, hold the chair with your left hand. Tip your right ear towards your right shoulder. As you tip down, you might feel like, oh, there's some stiffness, but we're gonna resolve some of that stiffness. So on the inhale, when you pull up, activate the muscles. On the exhale, let that activation drop down. As you follow your own breath cycle for that process, do it about five times. Each breath is a source of nourishment, so there's no need to rush anything. In fact, slowing down the breath it has a very powerful and beneficial effect on the nervous system. We'll do it one more time. And then exhale, release the action, float your head up to center. And if your head feels a little bit swimmy, know that that's very common and it's gonna settle out. 
Okay, so we're gonna use a kind of corkscrew method to go down into the body today, starting here at the neck and shoulders. So please come up to standing your chair as a prop. We're gonna turn the chair to face away from us. It goes like this. And if you're using a chair that is taller than this one, that is totally appropriate. If you're using a chair that's shorter than this and you're a tall person, that can pose a dilemma because you may find that it's kind of a big forward bend. So if you stand to face the chair, place your hands up on the chair seat like this, and then step your feet back. And as you're reaching back, we kind of want to come into an L position here. So as you reach back, spread your fingers, press the palms of your hands or the heels of your hands down on the chair, rather than holding the chair with the fingers, spread the fingers out. Reach your hips back, and if you do have tight hamstrings, please bend your knees, keeping the knees as wide as the toes. Slide your sitting bones back. Your hamstrings allow for it. You can work with straighter legs. For all of us, let's energize the leg muscles so there's a stable base. And then notice this really delicious opportunity for a deeper, smoother breath cycle right now. Allow yourself to exhale thoughtfully and completely. Notice the tone of the lower belly when you get to the end of the exhale. And then exhale one more time. Press with your palms down, lift your armpits and your shoulders up. Roll the spine up, look forward and step forward with one foot and then the other. Now for me, with my height, for those of you who don't know, I'm only five feet tall. There was a time where I think I was five foot one and I might still be, but I can't tell. But the height of this chair is really ideal for me to place my hand on and each of you has a different kind of chair to practice with at home. So let's put the left hand on the chair where it's gonna be comfortable as you see where we're going. Okay, and then inhale, raise your right arm up, press into your right heel and exhale, side bend to your left. So as you're side bending, the, the hand on the chair here is to help you with a bit of stability. But second to that, I want you to press down with your left hand on the chair and notice the activation of your abdominal muscles to support your inner core. Equally press down into your right foot. So think of your right foot and your left hand pressing down together. We want to be sure that you're side curving the spine evenly. So we're not just like creasing at one vertebrae or another. So this downward pressure of your hand is also going to help expand the lateral ribs here and should help the curve of the spine to be more even as you side bend to your left. And then exhale, use the right low belly right here to bring yourself up, lower your arm down. And notice the difference in your body. You probably feel a little bit asymmetrical. Okay, so you can turn about with your chair. I'm gonna turn my chair, but you can rotate yourself. And then place the right hand at the top of the chair. Take the left hand out to the side. Inhale, raise up. Okay, press into your left heel and exhale, side bend to your right. As you're coming over, Press into your right hand. So it's not a floppy side bend. It's not like Raggedy Ann or Raggedy Andy. And aim to get a full breath cycle, which means you're gonna be stretching your lungs and your body and your diaphragm from the inside, while you are also stretching from the outside. So as you're pressing firmly into your left heel, Lift your heart and lengthen into your fingertips. One more inhale, press into your right palm, expand your left rib cage. And then exhale and draw up using the left low belly, float your left arm down. 
So the tension is unwinding. We're corkscrewing down, releasing tension as we go, a little bit like a, a wood sculptor when they're using their sculpting and you see the, the wood pieces just like flying off, but the tension is just flying off of the body. Okay, let's put, I'm gonna put myself on the other side of the chair again. So I'll move my chair, you don't have to keep moving yours. Now with your left hand on the chair, take a wide stance about like this. And for some of us, that's already a stretch for the inner thighs or the groin. So when you take a wide stance, make the feet parallel, root the tailbone down, and try to sense any opening you have at the front of the hips right here. And see if you might allow the hips to come a little bit forward in line with the toes, just to explore. That's not where we do the pose from, but as you come forward, can you sense what's happening in the hip flexors here? Okay, and then draw your hips back to line up with your heels and try to sense the back hemisphere of your body in that same plumb line. So there's your heels, your hamstrings, your hips, the back of the spine, the base of the skull, the back of your head. And then turn your left foot directly to the left. And I turned that by pivoting just on my heel, but the whole leg, if you watch, the whole leg is gonna rotate left. So now the hips are quite naturally facing a little bit to the left. Okay, so we don't, we don't have this idea that they're gonna stay forward as we turn the leg, that would twist the knee. Take your left hand and press down against the chair, raise your right arm. And then exhale and side bend over. And this time you can take your hand down to the seat of the chair. Now I will ask you again to press down with your support arm. In that case, it's your left arm. Stretch the right hemisphere of the body. Press into your right heel and your left hand, just as we did on the first go. So keeping the left arm and your right leg strong is gonna allow you to have the stability. So it's not all dependent upon like, let's say the left knee or the left hamstring or inner thigh. And as you sense the left leg stretching, start engaging your left toes, your arch, your calf, your thighs, the inner thigh, the outer thigh, the back of the thigh, the front of the thigh. Enjoy another deep breath in. And then as you exhale, release the left hand, use the right low belly to pull yourself up and relax your right arm down. You can use the chair for support if you need to, or you can pivot your foot back to center without the support of the chair. And then we're gonna go heel, toe, heel, toe. And that is an act of dexterity, it turns out, right? In my yoga classes for people with Parkinson's and MS, that action of heel, toe, heel, toe actually helps to support their gait, help to support walking and mobility. It is foot dexterity to do that. Now take a wide stance on this side. We'll start with the feet parallel. Root the tailbone down. Drift your hips a little forward so they're in line with the toes. And as you drift forward, feel the pressure going into your toes, but don't leave your heels. So this little bit of forward is a stretch on the hip flexors. And then drift back until you feel like you're in the plumb line of your heels and the whole back of the body stays in that plumb line for this pose. So we're experimenting with this little forward to feel the hip flexors, but we don't use that forward action in the pose we're gonna do. So pick up the right toes and turn your right leg. And that rotation, if it's done mindfully, tells you how far your pelvis is gonna turn with your leg. So again, it's not gonna stay at 180. That would be distorting the alignment of your knee. Raise your left arm. And exhale, side bend, and you might choose to place your right hand on the seat of the chair. And as you come down, energize your left foot and your right hand. You can picture that the left hemisphere of the body is like it, like a parachute, it's gonna be expanding. We're looking for more space for the breath here. Remind yourself that you're standing in the back hemisphere of the body. 
So we aren't hinging forward. We're able to broaden the back ribs, the back of the waist. If it's comfortable for you to do so, you could turn to look up. And now breathing in. Energize your right leg, your right toes, your calf, all those thigh muscles, inner, outer, back, and front. And then with your next exhale, tone the left low belly and pull yourself up. Release your left arm down. And using your hip joint, pick up the toes, rotate back to parallel. Okay, now you've come back to parallel and we are here. There's an ideal moment. This is a little bit of chair gymnastics for me. Okay, let's come down to a forward bend where we get to rest on the seat of the chair. So the hands can go to the seat of the chair or your forearms and therefore your forehead. As you come down to this pose, it's called Prasarata Padottanasana, or the wide leg forward bend, done from standing. As you come down to the pose, let the breath now get smooth and nourishing. Lengthen your spine by keeping your arms grounded Reach through the crown of your skull. And then draw your sitting bones back away from your shoulder blades. And lengthen the base of your neck, the base of the skull, and the tailbone. They're all moving away from each other. In this position where the arms are supporting you to come into a forward bend, it's still important to have the strength of the legs. So energize your thighs, your outer hips, your inner thighs. And then exhale. Walk your hands to the seat of the chair. Press down against the chair seat. Take your hands to your hips and rise up to standing. We'll go heel, toe, heel, toe again. Heel, toe, heel, toe for foot dexterity. Come back to standing at ease. Okay, so now we have this chair seat is lower than the upper back of the chair. We're gonna use it for another pose. Again, staying in the back hemisphere of the body but we're gonna explore what it feels like in the front hemisphere. So I'll ask you to take a wide stance. Now turn your left foot directly to the left. Okay. And if you take the tailbone down and let the hips just lean a little bit forward, you're gonna start feeling what happens with the right hip there when the hips lean forward. So just notice it, right? And it's okay if what you're noticing is that your hip flexors are actually limited. We, we are gonna stretch the hip flexors. What we don't wanna do is have that limitation become a collapse in the lower back. So we don't wanna be sloppy back here in the lumbar spine. So stand with the tailbone going down and picture your leg is lining up with the heel of your foot, not with the toes of your foot. And the right leg, we wanna line up also with the left heel or the front leg lines up with the back heel, we could say that. And then bend this knee just so it lightly touches the chair, it's not gonna push into it. In fact, let me give you a gap so you can see. So we're near to the chair, but we're not touching it. You see the gap there? Yeah. Sweep the arms out. Now rotate your pelvis. You're actually turning it like you might turn a doorknob or a teapot. Place your left hand. Press into your left hand and into your right foot and then sweep this arm overhead. Now, different than the pose that we just did, we're actually not looking for a big curve in the spine right now. We're looking for a straighter spine. So reach your tailbone towards your right heel. 
Come into the back hemisphere of the body and reach with your right thumb. It's the back side of the, the arm. So reach from your lower back into your right thumb. Lengthen the left side of the rib cage. That is the underside, this one here. Now breathing in, I'm gonna ask you to exhale, raise the left arm, inhale, come up. Wonderful, okay, exhale, release the arm. So that requires a little more stability and strength to do it that way. Let's try again, heel, toe, heel, toe, foot dexterity. Notice how your body feels. And we're gonna change the chair to the other side. So these are lateral poses, we call them in yoga, lateral standing poses. And they're really helpful in the spring because of their influence on the organs in the abdomen also. Twists are also really helpful in the spring. We'll be doing that next. So when you line up now, heel to heel on the mat, if you turn your right foot and then you drift the hips forward, you may sense, okay, there's the hip flexors. They're on the menu today too, but we don't wanna be leaning the hips forward and collapsing the lower back in this pose. So we're gonna bring the hips back into alignment. You can feel the left heel really gets grounded. And then bend your right knee without running into the chair. We're not resting on it. You can aim the right knee with the third toe of your foot. So it really has a clear aim like an archer would have. Raise the arms and take the right hand down. Rotate your pelvis. And look for this long, beautiful line into your back heel. And in the top hand, reach through your thumb. Right, so it's like the back side of the body. I sometimes, I used to say, as if you were wearing suspenders and you're holding the back suspender with your left thumb, stretch the suspenders on the back of your body. Lengthen your tailbone down towards your left heel. You wanna feel like the inner right thigh can lengthen and the outer right thigh is strengthening. Let's breathe in, connect into the back hemisphere of your body. And then with an exhale, raise your right arm. Inhale, come up using the left low belly. Yes, wonderful. Release your arms, make your foot parallel, and we'll go heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. And then take a stance in mountain pose. You might notice where there's a sense of aliveness in your body, where is there energy or movement or effervescence, I sometimes like to call it. And then we're gonna take the chair and sit in it. So we're gonna be using it, sitting sideways in the chair. And I will ask you, for those of you who are not very tall or you don't have long legs, it may be really helpful to have a block to put your foot on. So I will show you why. When we turn sideways in the chair, and I think we'll, we'll keep going in the same, we'll go to this side first, we'll keep the pattern. When we turn sideways, I'm gonna want your foot to be flat on the floor. But for some of us, when we turn that way and we go to the next pose, you're gonna find that your heel picks up a little bit. And so you may or may not need this support. So you come over and face to your left, you've got both feet flat on the floor. That seems perhaps easy enough, right? No big changes with your feet just yet. But I'm gonna be asking you to drop the right knee down like this. And we're gonna go into a stretching position for the hip flexor. And so if dropping down right there means for you that your heel just got light on the floor, then I'll recommend that you put a block under your foot like this. Now you do wanna hold 
hold the upper back of the chair so you're not going to fall off. And when you, when you take the right knee down, you can either have the toes curled under or you can have the toes pointed. Curled under is a more dynamic stretch, but it requires foot dexterity also. So aim your right knee down, lift the pubic bone up, hold the chair with your left hand so you're stable. The pelvis should not be sliding off to the right. As you aim your right knee down, inhale, raise your right arm up alongside your ear. And then add a very slight side bend, which is gonna stretch the hip flexors and the iliacus a little bit differently. Okay, let's inhale. Raise your torso up. Keep your left arm on the upper back of the chair for support. Release your right arm down. Lean a little bit forward. Come over the right toes and then step your right foot forward and both feet can go flat on the floor again. Turn to center so I can see your smiling faces, right? So some circulation there, some limitation for some of us, it's okay. It's a new position for some, so let it be an exploratory experience too. All right, let's go to the other side. So if I use my dining room chairs or the chairs that are in the place that would be the dining room, if I had a dining room, those chairs are taller for the seat. So it's even more important that I know how to use the block to support myself. So when you turn sideways, if you add this dropping of the left leg, and it feels like your right heel is getting light on the floor, that's when you place the block. It's not something that everyone will need. It is individual. And then drop the left knee down, but hold on to the upper back of the chair with your right arm. We want the hips to be level here. Yeah. You should take the tailbone down, lift the pubic bone up. Breathe into your left hip flexors. Hello, hip flexors. Maybe you're saying, hello, 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 hello. It's been a long time. <laughs> you know, for me, it has been a lot of gardening. So my hip flexors and I are very well acquainted. Raise the left arm up. And add a little side bend to your right. As you aim the left knee straight down, again, we don't want to be overarching the lower back. So keep a broad sense of support for the lumbar spine. And then exhale, come up. And lean a little forward, release your back leg and turn the face forward. Okay, so the hip flexors, the groin, that whole experience, if we have more time sitting, and many people do have more time in flexion than they do in extension, it can seem pretty dynamic to stretch into that. Let me show you another way to make that a dynamic stretch that uses the chair and provides you with some support. So in this case, we're gonna be using the block to support the knee, and you'll have an opportunity also to put a blanket on that block that can make it more padded. So if I put this block flat here underneath my chair, and you're basically placing it where your thigh is going to come down, because it'll be off the side of the chair here. And then we place a little blanket, so it's going to be padded like this. Good practice to take a wide stance, like a jazz dance class, my jazz dance move. And then we're gonna turn, you can watch me. It might be easier to see where I'm going. You can turn like this and place the knee down. You know that it's already supported. And for those people for whom the foot doesn't curl easily, this is a nice way to support the knee. If somebody has a knee replacement, you wanna do it like this, where the knee comes down just beyond the block 
And that way it's not directly on the kneecap. And then we use the chair for support and come a little forward. And as you're coming forward, you wanna stretch the hip flexors right through here. So the knee might be supported for some of you or the shin is supported, but no pressure on the kneecap. The toes could be tucked under, but they could also be straight behind you. Take the tailbone down and think about the lower belly supporting the pelvic girdle right here. So it's not a lazy abdomen. We are lifting the inner belly up. Lift up through the crown of your skull. Let's press into the front heel for additional support. You have your chair close by, but you might feel confident to take the hands to the heart. If the front heel is grounded and your front leg feels strong and stable and your lower back feels spacious, you may have the desire to raise the arms up overhead. And then we're going to exhale. We just bring the hands down to the heart and you've got the support of the chair. So we lean a little bit forward. For some who are doing the knee replacement version, you're going to glide your hips back onto the chair seat like I just did. For others, we turn, voila, you're back in the jazz dance warm-up pose. I made that up. We don't have a jazz dance warm-up pose. In yoga, it's just a pet name for a certain activity. Let's go the other way. So you can get there by turning to touch down. And for some people, the knee is gonna be forward like this because they don't have the flexibility of the hip flexors, or it might feel like, oh my God, that's such a strong stretch for the quadriceps. Right? So in that case, you wanna to get to the hip flexors, but the quadriceps are problematic. You have to raise the seat you're sitting on on the chair. You would take a blanket, put it on the chair seat. You could take an extra block or two, make a booster seat on the chair that you're sitting on so that you can feel into your hip flexors. And then we come forward. Meanwhile, keeping the chair for support. Lengthen the tailbone down. Lift the low belly in and up so there's Support right here in the hip girdle. Lift your back ribs up so you're not collapsing at the lumbar spine. And if all of that feels stable to you, you could release the hold you have on the chair and bring your palms to your heart. You'll notice a little bit of balance is required, a little bit of strength for both legs, but make sure that you've got some strength in your right hip. The right knee ought to point in line with the third toe. If your upper back and lower back agree on it, you could raise the arms up. And then we exhale, keep the belly toned, return your hands to your heart. I recommend you lean a little bit forward with the torso, slide your hips back onto the chair seat and then turn. And while we have our little booster seat, let's put the feet up on the booster. Close the eyes. Let your attention drop down. down to the floor and the way to get down to the floor and particularly if you are someone where you've had a hip replacement, it's not comfortable to put your kneecap to the floor. So the way that we do this, I'll ask you to stand up. So place your hands on the seat of the chair, your feet back a little ways. You're gonna use upper body and abdominal strength. So we come over the toes and people often wanna do one at a time, that is fine, but you can also use 
two straight arms, lower the toes, sorry, the knees down gently, and then scooch off of the kneecap area, roll down to your side, swing the feet around, and then come down to lie on your back. Let's have this blanket that we were just using close by. And when you lie down, once you get the legs up on the chair seat, <clears throat> you can scoot them to the back, lift your hips, and take this blanket under the back of the pelvis because it adds a nice comfort for the lumbar spine. It also makes it easier for those of us with shorter thighs, like myself, makes it easier for us to reach the chair seat with the knees, right? They easily get to the edge of the chair. It doesn't feel so firm there. Let's tuck the shoulder blades under. Bring your palms down to your abdomen or to your heart. You're welcome to close your eyes. And start feeling your body turn inward. As you turn inward, you can picture it like you're going in to a place of refuge and renewal. Again, releasing the tension of your body and being with the intention to rest in the present moment. From moment to moment, allow your body to release tension, to receive the full support of the ground beneath you. Notice your body going through the transition from activity to stillness. You're balancing out your heart rate, your circulation, your body temperature.
your body relaxes more and more, practice the art of even deeper surrender. Welcome yourself to have the level of renewal and restoration that your body and your vitality can offer to you. Allowing that rest to be like a little footprint of your body on the floor. Bring the element of the earth into your awareness. And then the element of the air and the breath. So keeping your body very still and heavy, let the breath return gently. Roll your head side to side. Notice if your neck might feel a little more free. Let's bring the knees and the shins and the feet to the front edge of the chair. And then if it's comfortable, allow the knees to drop towards your shoulders. And you can roll downhill to one side. Use your hands to return back up to sitting. If you rolled down to your side and you want to return to your chair, and let's say you have a knee replacement, so imagine that I rolled down to my side. You are sideways, and it helps to have a block. You place the knees on the blanket where the shins are not touching the blanket. It's less painful, and then you press to come up. You also can use both hands on the chair seat to come up. Okay, let's take a seat. So drop in and recalibrate in a meditative moment here. And then raise your hands to your heart. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your practice and your intention for practice. May you feel recalibrated and renewed. Namaste. Thank you very much for sharing your practice with me and with the community. I'm really glad you've been here. If this was a helpful practice for you, please do click the like button and leave us comments and questions down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's good to have you here and we look forward to making more classes and more programs for you. Thank you everyone. Namaste.